All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world, this is Chris, aka Barn on Eleven Nine Seventy, and I got a great video that I want to basically try and get as many people as possible to listen to. This is going to be the most important video I've ever done. It's going to help a lot of people figure out what's been going on. This is years of me studying, learning from different people, learning different sections and putting the puzzle together and pretty much have the answer of why we're enslaved and how we can pretty much get out of it. The getting out of it part I'm still working on, but when you see everything put into perspective, you're going to be wowed. So the one thing I would recommend is please, I know this might be a long video, watch the entire thing. I ask people to share this because we need to get this information out because once you hear some of the things that our government has done to us and what we've actually done to ourselves, and I'll explain how that happened, you'll never look at this government again. And I know some people say, well, where are the links? Well, they're studying here from common law, trust law, admiralty law, symbolism, um, all different aspects to be able to get this done. So that's how they basically trick people for the longest time because there's so many different pieces to the puzzle. It takes a long time to actually put it all together. And watching a bunch of people that I have, I got a lot of information. So let me get this started. So you may want to watch this with somebody who doesn't believe in this stuff because belief has nothing to do with the truth. So I'm going to go over some stuff again that's been done in other videos. I'm going to basically put everything into one video to kind of give you the idea of how we've been screwed and why. All right. So we're going to start with the fact that I've talked about uh, the symbolism and legal definitions because these are going to be relevant. Um, we're also going to talk about admiralty law, your birth certificate, and how you've been enslaved since birth. Now we're going to start with um, the admiralty law. We're starting with you in the womb. So when your mother's pregnant with you, you just think it's a process of having a child. You give birth to the child. You sign a couple of documents, and then you live your life as a person. There's a lot of things that you need to know about because, as they say, ignorance is no excuse of the law. So if you don't know the law, it's going to enslave you and entrap you. And the way they do it is by using words. And they use the words in different terms. It's called legalese, which means legal definitions have different meanings than what you and I have been basically taught to think they mean. So let's start with the admiralty law. Now, why does it have to do with admiralty law? Well, this again, this is how they trick you because you don't think that when you're pregnant, you have a child, that you have anything to do with law of the sea. But technically, under their laws, you do, because you are made mostly of water. You are in a womb that is filled with water. So basically what's happening is, under admiralty law, you are in a ship, and you are going to dry land. You're docking from a ship. And the reason why I could say this is, when they created the birth certificate, the way it happens is when you're born, your parents sign a certificate of live birth, and it's signed and authorized by a doctor, goes off, and you get a birth certificate. Now, you think those things are the same. They're not. First one says certificate of live birth. Second one is birth certificate. What they do is they make a dummy corporation in your name, and we're going to go through how they do all this stuff and how they get away with it. So the name on your birth certificate is not you, even though it looks like you. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, let's say, for example, you, you were on or you're on a boat called the Titanic. And your name happens to be Stephen Samuel Titanic. Your last name is Titanic. Well, you look on the back of that ship, it says SS Titanic. Your initials are SS Titanic. You have the same exact name. And let's just assume the SS on the Titanic meant Stephen Samuel. Does that mean that's you? Does that mean you're the boat? Just because you have the identically same name? And when that ship sank and you left it, you've abandoned ship, so to speak. So we'll get into that again later on. But when you're born, you're actually, through admiralty law, you are being birthed from the birth canal through a vessel, which is made of primarily of water. You're connected to the ship with your umbilical cord. Well, if you know anything about 
admiralty law, well, what's the military of the sea? It's called the Navy. Well, what's another name for your belly button? It's called the Naval. These things are not coincidences. You're going to see that throughout how I talk about this stuff. It's hidden in plain sight, so when you see it, you don't notice it. Just like, for example, when they talk about in the Bible about the uh, temple that is not built by man and is not made by wall. Well, what are these? It's your temple, but that's a story for another time. All right, so when you're born, you come out of the womb, they cut you from the ship, which is the placenta, and basically you leave the placenta behind. Now, what's in the placenta besides water? Well, your DNA. So they actually have proof that they end up owning you. And this is how they own you. Not you, the person, but how they have the ability to make a fictional corporation under your name. And they label you as a person. Well, if you look up the legal definition of the word person, it means a fictional character, a corporation. So it's, it's not you even though it has your same name. And this is how they get away with it. So when your mother gives birth to you, they take the baby home. They sign the certificate of live birth. The doctor autographs his signature to confirm as a witness, which, by the way, when a ship comes to port, what is it called? It's a dock. Well, what is who is the person that's authorizing this and, to, and helps you with the baby? A doctor. In other words, a dock. These, again, these are not coincidences. So in admiralty law, the whole idea of birth certificate came from the fact that when countries were doing um, commerce with other countries and shipped goods from their country to another via ship, when that ship docked into the port on the vessel, which is another name for a ship, it's a vessel, they have to take each particular item, they have to register it, and they give it a certificate of birth which means it's cargo. That's where birth certificates originated from. It originates from admiralty law when countries are doing commerce with one another and they have inventory that needs to be registered and identified. So they create a certificate, a birth certificate of the name of the product, what it in involves, where it came from, and its registration number. Sound familiar on your birth certificate pretty much? Okay, so... When you ever, you ever notice after a birth that happens, you see in the newspaper a day or two later, they say, John and Mary Smith gave birth to John Smith Jr. And you think, oh, that's nice. I'm in the hospital is just mentioning that. That's a cool thing. What they're actually doing is it's kind of like a lost and found where they're saying, we, we found this DNA that's been abandoned at the hospital and we're trying to find the person who has it to claim it. It's like, for example, and somebody made this as an amazing way to think about it. Let's say you have very long hair and you decide, I'm going to go to the barber and I'm going to just shave my head. So you go to the barber, shave your head, all that hair falls to the floor. You think oh, you did a great job. You pay and you go on your way. Well, all that hair, which was part of you, which is full of your DNA, you've abandoned. So it technically is the property of the person who owns that hair cutting facility. So if they wanted to take that hair and turn around and sell it as a wig and make a profit off of it, well, they're making profit off of your DNA, part of who you are. But because you abandoned it, it's no longer yours. So this is how they are able to justify having a corporation in your name because they have the only proof that you are who you say you are. Because when you talk about forensic science, well, in a forensic crime where they need to get information, what do they do? They look for a person's DNA because the DNA is individual to each person. No two strands are ever alike. So your DNA is you. So that's proof of who you are. So I can say I'm anybody. I can say I'm Michael Jackson. I could say I'm Claudia Schifford. I could say I'm Bruce Springsteen or George Washington. But the DNA of who I am proves absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, I am who I say I am. So when your parents gave birth to you and they left that placenta behind, the government takes that DNA evidence, displays it on a newspaper and says, without basically saying it, because they're sneaky and this is all based on fraud, they're saying on a piece of paper in the newspaper, here is the birth of such and such person. 
what they're really doing is, is basically saying, we found this person, the DNA. They're not talking about the baby because the baby was taken, taken, the baby was taken home. So it's not that they're saying we have the physical baby. They're talking about the DNA, which proves who you are. Otherwise, whatever you say, whatever name you've been given is nothing more than hearsay. So the fact that you have your name on a driver's license does not mean that's you. It's technically hearsay because unless you were conscious and had it recorded, it's you can't prove you are who you say you are just because your parents even gave you a name. But your DNA can prove if it's linked to you. So after a couple of days of nobody coming to claim that placenta because they don't, no one knows what that is and they don't think about it. The government has the right to take your DNA and create a fictional character and label you, according to admiralty law, dead at sea. Well, because you didn't come and claim it, and with ignorance is no excuse of the law, your silence is the same as consent. Now, let me explain what that means. Silence is the same as consent. Because most people say, well, I didn't know about it, so how, they can, how can they get away with it? This is how they get away with it. And I've used this example in other videos. Let's say a bunch of us are going out to dinner. We're all going to pay for our separate meals. And we're buying drinks and whatever dinner. At the end of the day, we have a, um, a pie. And we slice the pie up and divide it. And there's one piece of pie left. Everybody's eating. Now, I want to make a legal claim to that piece of pie. And I say out loud, I'm claiming that I'm going to take that last piece of pie. Well, the other people have choices. Well, they can say, yeah, go ahead. You can have it. We're full. Or they could say, no, you can't have it. Who are you to take the extra piece? Let's talk about it. They could say, no, let's divide it. Or they could say nothing. Well, in law, if you make a claim of something and the other parties involved who heard the claim do not dispute it or argue it or create additional terms and just stay silent, that's the same as them saying, go ahead and take it. In other words, they comply with your request. So when it comes to when you're born and your parents, because one man's junk is another man's treasure, when they leave that placenta behind, then just think, well, you know, that's going to be thrown out. The government tries to first have somebody come back and identify who they are by posting the birth into the newspaper. And when nobody claims it, it's considered abandoned. So the DNA is not you, the person, but it's who identifies who you are. Because DNA traces back to each individual person. So they have the actual proof that you are an existing entity. And because you don't report it, they technically, under admiralty law, consider you dead, lost at sea. So even though I am here alive as a human being, under the government's rules, because of the fact when I was an infant, I didn't go or my parents didn't go and report and claim back that DNA, they own the proof that I am who I am. And because I didn't go back and claim it, it was abandoned. So you have abandoned ship. Just like when I said before about the Titanic, you can have the exact name as the Titanic, but that doesn't mean you are that boat. So when that boat sank, and you jumped off that boat, you're, a, you're abandoning ship. It's just meant to not be literally. It's all based on figurative and symbol. Now, symbols, the reason that they have symbols is for basically throughout history, the average person could not read and write. Even kings could not read and write a lot of times. Who were, who were able to be able to transfer laws throughout the history? Well, the clergy. The, the people who wrote the Bible, they also wrote the laws. They had to learn how to read and write. So the average person, how did they know what a law was if they couldn't read and write? Well, symbolism is the answer to that. Like, I'll give a prime example. And again, I've done this in other videos, but I want this whole thing so everybody can get this stuff. If you were driving along in a car and all of a sudden you see a light go from the color green to the color red, what do you do? Well, what are you supposed to do? You stop. Now, it didn't say stop. It did, you didn't read a word that says stop. You just know because the symbolism means that when a light turns red, you're supposed to stop. So even if you couldn't read and write, you understood what it meant. So that's what symbolism is. So in law, there are certain words that if you don't know the meaning can enslave and entrap you. Now, let's get into the Constitution. So we're talking about First of all, the, the way they can enslave you is by the fact that when you're born, your parents leave behind the placenta, your ship, 
according to admiralty law. And again, it's not the literal sense that it's not a boat. They're talking, it's not, it's in the figurative sense. So you're a creature of water. You're created into this water vessel. You leave the vessel into dry land through your vessel, which is the placenta. The parents leave the placenta behind, which is full of your DNA. And also, they take out of your left foot, they draw blood. Well, where do they take it from? The sole of your foot, your soul. Okay? It it's all goes into play. So after a couple of days, they post in the newspaper, such and such gave birth to this person. You think that's a nice thing that they're doing. They're actually trying to do a lost and found and say, hey, we found this baby. Come and claim it. And when nobody does it, they basically say, oh, well, they didn't claim it, so they must be dead. So they are allowed legally, not lawfully, but legally, there's a difference, to claim that you're dead and create a fictional character, a corporation. So if your name was, um, like I said before, S Stephen Samuel Titanic, well, what they do is when you file that certificate of live birth and you have the doctor sign it, you send that away. After that time of people not claiming it, they say, oh, they didn't come and claim it, so they must be dead. So we're going to create Stephen Samuel Titanic, the corporation, and send back, instead of a certificate of live birth, they send you a birth certificate. It's not you. That means your cargo. And what they do is they put it in all capital letters. So if you look at your birth certificate now, your driver's license now, with very few exceptions, because there are exceptions, because if you have connections in government or you're very wealthy, you probably don't have this, but you will see your name in all capital letters. Now, you think that's just a pretty font. Well, all capital letters in law is symbolism, like I said before. The symbolism means it's a fictional character, a corporation. So that is not you. When you look at your driver's license and see your name, that is not you. Now, what is a corporation? Let's get into that. Now, let's just use, for example, McDonald's. McDonald's is a corporation. Now, when if, if I was to ask you, well, tell me what that corporation is. Well, if you point to a McDonald's restaurant and say, well, that's McDonald's corporation, you would be wrong because that's just the building that they do their business in. That's not the corporation. Well, then you could say, okay, well, what about the corporate headquarters? You know, it says Corporation of McDonald's or whatever corporation it's called. And that's where they do all their business. Again, you would be wrong. That is not the corporation. That is just the building that they do business in. What is the corporation? Well, let me show you. When you register a business, you send in your money, your fee, and they send you back a certificate that has this word on it. Well, it's backwards, but it says McDonald's in all capital letters. This is the corporation. It's a title. It's a piece of paper. That's not the physical part. It just means that you've registered this name as a corporation, which you can do business under. So if you'd want to do McDonald's out of your backyard, if you were the owner of that corporation, you could. So the business itself is not the corporation. It's the name. So when I talk about you as a corporation, they're not talking about you specifically. They're talking about a piece of paper that has the business name of Stephen Samuel Titanic or whatever name you have. Okay, so let's continue from there. How we got where we are today. Most people don't realize this, but there are actually two constitutions. The original Constitution was created in 1781, ratified in 1785, and was exactly the same as the new Constitution that you don't know about, except for two different wordings. Everything else is pretty much exactly the same. What they did was the original Constitution says, instead of for the people, they changed it to of the people. Now, what does that mean? Well, Basically, in a nutshell, it goes from for the people, which means the government works for the people, to of the people, which basically means you work for the government. So they switch that just by one word. It may not seem like a big deal to you. The second word is the major one, and this is where they enslave people. This is where your votes don't count. This is why you need a driver's license and you have to pay taxes. But you don't have to. You've just subjected yourself to do so. They changed it from the United States of America, which is the country, to the United States. Now, most people will say, well, that's the same thing. 
Well, no, it's not. Because first of all, the United States of America will be capital U, United, capital S, States, capital A, America. You could look at any like $5 bill, $10 bill from like 1860 and before any notes, they had that. Now, if you see everything in the United that says United States is all in capital letters. Now, like I said before, in law, anything that's all capital letters is a fictional character, a corporation. So what they did was they did this during the Civil War, because first of all, the Civil War had nothing to do with slaves and freeing of slaves. That was a good excuse. It's just like any military today. It's all about starting a centralized bank, taking over the people's resources and creating money. And the reason that they say things like, for example, us going over to the Middle East, they use the justification of, well, we're going to liberate the people. And they use children's deaths and women's deaths as a way to get people to say, oh, we need to go over there because they need the backing of the people. Because if they was if they were going to say, well, we're going to start a war over, let's say, in Iran, and we're just going to kill a bunch of people, we're going to take their oil and we're going to make, you know, we're going to make tons of money off of it. How many people do you think would agree to that? They wouldn't. So they have to have a reason. So in the Civil War, the justification for that war was freeing the slaves. Now, they never freed them. They just changed them into a different form of slaves, just like you and I. Now, when you think the word slave, you just think of an African-American person. Again, it's a divide and conquer um, contract. It's all about getting people to hate each other. So blacks hated whites, whites hated blacks. It's separation. It had nothing to do with the war. What basically was happening is, is the United, the original United States of America was nothing more than colonies that became union states, which joined together in a union, forming a government, a country. It's just like what happens in Europe. You have the Netherlands, you have Sweden, you have France, you have Germany. They're all states, states of Europe, but they're not United States, so they're separate countries. It was the same thing when our country was founded. Each state was technically a different country. We formed a union to create a country called America. This is where they trick you. So when you see the United States of America, they're talking about the actual land and actual where the Constitution was originally started in 1781. When you see the word United States, that is a corporation that is located in D.C. in a 10 square mile radius. District of Columbia. Now, it's so funny because who did this, who supposedly discovered America, which is ironic because they discovered a land that was already inhabited by millions of people for thousands of years. But the person that supposedly discovered the Americas, which includes North and South America, remember, the Americas is all of that land, was Columbus. Well, District of Columbia, another nice word for District of Columbus. Basically, what Columbus did was discovered America, claimed it for Spain, and slaughtered all of the, the native people. You don't hear that in the history books. So what they basically did in a nutshell is the United States, which is a corporation, is a foreign country located in America. Just like, for example, the Vatican over in Italy is not part of Italy. It's its own country, just like the city of London. Now, don't mistake in that for London, the city. I'm talking about it's specifically called the city of London. It's actually part of London, but it's its own country located there. Same thing with D.C. It is not part of America. It's located in on the continent of America. But what they did was they basically became traitors to America and created their own government. And basically for any law for to be abided by, you had to live within that 10 mile radius, 10 mile squared radius. Now, most people would say, well, I live in New Jersey or I live in California. Or I live in Hawaii. I'm not within that 10 miles. So that doesn't include me, does it? This is how they get you. When they had the Civil War, there was a lot of damage. There's a lot of people, you know, worrying about death and destruction. There was a lot of money that was being made and lost. That's one of the reasons why Ken, um, Abraham Lincoln got assassinated, because to be able to pay for the war, because wars cost money, because you have to pay for soldiers and the people to manufacture the wars, you know, the weapons of mass destruction, they had to borrow money from banks. Now, one of the ways to be able to get more money is that, um, Lincoln actually lowered the uh, value of gold. So overnight, people lost 40% of their wealth, but it allowed them to create more money so they could spend it for the war. Between 1863 and 1865, they created, they got rid of the original constitution, changed those words, as I stated before, and created new amendments, which basically makes them and us all frauds and traitors to the America. Now, let me explain what they did. 
Okay, one of the first ones they did was on December 6, 1865. That was the 13th Amendment. That basically, in a nutshell, was to abolish slavery. So the way they, the way you think it means. Okay, so I'm going to explain how slavery was actually better for the slaves before they fixed this, because let's get into that. Slaves before the Civil War, which unfortunately were just one specific gender, the African American people, um, what they did was they were considered property, which means property is going to give you a benefit, but you also have to take care of it. In other words, like for example, one of your things of property that you probably have is a TV. Now you wouldn't leave a TV out in the rain, would you? No, you keep it inside. It's like having a pet. Technically, a pet is your property. You know, if it's sick, you're going to take it to the hospital if you love it. And if it's your family, you're going to feed it. You're going to make sure you take care of it. You're going to give it a place to live. But it's subject to whatever you decide. Like, for example, if you own a cat and you want affection from your cat, you could go over and grab him and take care of him, even if he didn't want it or she didn't want it. They have to wait until you decide to feed them. So they're subject to your terms. So you could be a good person that takes care of your animals, or you could be abusive, but they'll stick around because they're dependent on you to take care of them. So with the slaves, what happened? Yes, they could get killed. Yes, they could be abused. Yes, they could be beaten. Yes, they had to do work that they probably didn't want to do. But there were some benefits. They got food. They got medical care because most people profited off of their slaves. So if your slaves all die... You don't have any profit anymore. So they did basically take care of them. They gave them food, water, shelter, protection, clothing. They provided these things. So I'm not saying that slavery was good, but what I'm saying is they went from having those things to provide it to them to when they were freed, they now became citizens. And I'm going to explain in a little bit what citizen means. It's not what you think. So what they went from is being slaves to the system but being provided for to slaves of the system. In other words, they still have to pay taxes. They still could be imprisoned. You could still pay fines. You still have to do the laws of the government. So basically you're a slave to the system because you can't drive over 55 miles an hour without getting a ticket if you get pulled over, right? So you're not really free, but here's the difference. Now they have to get their own house. Now they have to get their own clothes. Now they have to find their own food. Now if they're sick, they have to take care of themselves. That's the difference. So let's get into the 14th Amendment. Now, again, this is when they ratified the Constitution. They basically destroyed the old Constitution, overthrew the American government. People made millions of dollars off of this, and the people that were in the government at the time didn't care because as long as they made theirs, they didn't care what it was going to do. And they created a corporation that they named the United States, which is located in D.C. Now, again, like I said before, D.C., it's the District of Columbia, and its radius of effect is only 10 square miles. This is how they entrapped you. Well, we start out. 14th Amendment, which started in July 9th, 1868. The amendment says, all persons. Now, remember, if you've seen my other videos, and I've talked about this before, you see the word persons, you think that's you. This is where they trick you. There's a legal definition of the word person. The legal definition of the word person is a corporation. A fictional character. So they're not talking about you, the human, the natural human. They're talking about you, the legal person that is born or naturalized in the United States. Now, notice it says, it doesn't say the United States of America. It says all persons, corporations, born or naturalized in the United States, the corporation. They just don't tell you that. And subject, now get this. Subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Okay, so let's break this down. Let's get into the word citizen. Again, if you think you're a citizen, well, you are, and I'm going to explain why that's bad. You think when they hear the word citizen, because you always hear your, your politicians always saying, we're doing this for the citizens. You are a citizen, but you don't want to be, because what a citizen means is, one, you are first either born or naturalized here in the United States, and two, you are subject to the jurisdiction of the United States, not the Americas, not the United States of America, the land where the original Constitution was created. They're talking about the corporation called the United States, subject to jurisdiction. Now, jurisdiction means a certain perimeter. 
Now, you don't have to be in that exact perimeter to be under its jurisdiction. Like, for example, if you were going to join the NRA, let's say you live in New York. The headquarters of the NRA is in Colorado. And they say, you know, mail in your subscription and you'll be part of the NRA. Well, does that mean you have to move to Colorado? No. You're making your payment. You're sending it over to them over in Colorado. They send you back your NRA card and you're now part of the NRA. You're within their jurisdiction. It doesn't always mean physical or literal. So when they say subject, what does that mean? Well, go back to Kings. What did Kings have? Well, Kings had subjects. Who were the subjects? They were the people that followed the king. So you were subject to what the king said. They were the king's subjects. So if the king said to do something, you better do it. Because if you didn't, you'd probably get thrown in jail, exiled, or even executed. Because the king's demands, the subjects have to follow. So again, let's read the 14th Amendment. All persons, corporations, born or naturalized in the United States corporation are subject to the jurisdiction thereof and are citizens of the United States and the states in which they reside. Now, let me explain state. It's not what you think it is. Like, for example, I live in New York. So if, if you were to say you live in New York State, it's not the landmass of New York, where the land, where they categorize the name New York is. That is the union of the state of New York. Again, they change the wording. They change it from the union state of New York to the state of New York, which in a nutshell is not talking about New York, the property that you're standing on, the dirt that you drive on. It's talking about a corporation called New York, which is filed somewhere in Washington, D.C. So when they say they own the land, now let me explain the definition of land too, because this goes back to the church. Because I've made videos in the past about how the Vatican has claimed land ownership of all the land and all its people. Well, land is not what you think it is, not in legal definitions. When you think land, you think property, you think dirt, you think grass, the land. Well, that's how they trick you. The land definition is you. Now, let me explain. If you've ever heard of a will and testament, you know, last will and testament, what is the will? Well, that's you because you're giving away your property. The testament is the property. So what is the will? The will is you. Now, how do they figure that? Because you have a soul, wherever it is in your body. Where does your soul live? It lives in you. So you are the land of your soul. So the definition of land in legal terms is not the actual ground. They're speaking about you. So when the Vatican made claim over the land, he's not talking about the dirt. He's talking about you. So when you live in the state of New York, the state of Arizona, the state of California, they're not talking about the land that you're walking on. They're talking about the corporation known as the state of New York, which is nothing more than a piece of paper. Remember when I talked about McDonald's? The corporation is just the word. It's not anything specific. So when they say you live under the state of New York, that is basically franchises of the corporation of the United States. Just as with McDonald's, there are different McDonald's throughout the land. But they are under the jurisdiction and subject to the terms of the McDonald's corporation. In other words, a McDonald's that is in Washington and a McDonald's that's in Hawaii and a McDonald's that's in Florida, well, they can't serve Burger King food. Why? Because the corporation of McDonald's says if you want to be under a corporation, you have to follow our rules, which means you have to sell what we tell you to sell. They're in different locations, but they're part of the same corporation. That is what happens when you become a citizen. Now, how do you become a citizen? Well, first of all, if you've ever registered to vote, or you've ever paid taxes, what are the first things that they always ask you to check off? Are you a U.S. citizen? So when you check yes, you've now consented through your ignorance that you are part of the jurisdiction according to the 14th Amendment that was done with the new Constitution of the United States, not the United States of America, which is the country. They're talking about the United States, which is the corporation. So you have actually willfully allowed yourself to be subject. Now, if you look at what they talk about in the Constitution, the reason the Constitution exists is because of the consent of the governed. Well, remember when I talked earlier about the fact that silence is the same as compliance. In other words, if you don't argue what somebody claims, it's the same as you agreeing. So this is how they get you. 
there are approximately 140 million registered voters in the United States. Not, Amer not America, not the United States of America, the corporation that's called United States. Now, Washington, D.C. has three delegates, which means, and this will prove that your votes actually do not count and do not matter and have not since the 18, early 1800s. Let's say 140 million people all decide to vote for the next president, and every single one of them votes for one specific person. Well, it only goes by delegates. So 140 million people could have voted, but because they're U.S. citizens, which means they volunteered to become subject to another foreign country that is made a deal from the Rothschilds from the city of London, it all has to do with money. This is a made-for-profit corporation called the United States. Well, 140 million people get three delegates. How many people are in Congress and in the Senate? There are more than three. So if you get more than three senators to go against you, let's say four of them decide to, to say, no, we want this person. Well, last time I checked, four beats three. So 140 million people could have made a, a vote thinking their individual vote matters. Well, it all has to do with the delegates. So the fact that the Washington, D.C. is only represented by three delegates doesn't matter what the people say. Your votes don't matter. So let's continue with, with this scam. And again, this all has to do with your consent. You didn't know about it, but you didn't argue it. So in law, if you're silent, you have consented. So technically, they're not doing anything wrong. So everybody says, oh, this is so unfair. Well, it's isn't it under, under legal definition, which is if you're going to go to court to fight this, you have to make sure you have the terms right. Under legal definition, is this not the consent of the governed? Because who complained about it? Who argued it? Who disputed it? Who challenged it? Your silence is the same as compliance. So you're basically saying it's like working for the company Walmart. There are benefits of working at Walmart. Let's say you're a manager and they give you paid vacation. They give you a health plan. You get paid to be able to get your bills paid. But if they tell you, well, if you want to work for Walmart, if we tell you to work at Christmas time, no matter how much you might hate it, you have to do it. If we tell you to clean the toilets, you may not like it, but you have to do it if you want to keep the job. Otherwise, there's the door. You don't have to be part of the corporation. So it's the same thing with this whole situation. Well, you can get welfare. You can get health care. You can get all different types of benefits. But they also make the rules. Like, for example, if you work at the cash register at Walmart, and let's say your draw that on your register is $500 short, well, they can dock your pay if they want. They have the right to do that. So in other words, you can get punished. So if you get caught driving over 55 miles an hour because they're responsible for you. You're their, their your, your employer. You're their employee. So in other words, they're responsible for you. So if you have an injury in the place, they have to take care of you. So if you're at Walmart, you slip and fall and break your leg, they actually have to give you workers' compensation. In other words, they're responsible. But again, you can't go around punching other people because they're responsible. So you'll get fired. So there's pros and cons. So like, for example, if you want to be a U.S. citizen under the jurisdiction of the United States Corporation, well, they have rules. Some of the rules are you can't litter. You could be fined. You can't build a house without a permit. You can't drive a car without a license. And if you do any of these things, you are subject under their jurisdiction and they can fine you or punish you, or tax you, whatever they want to call it, and you have no legal right to say anything, because even though you may not have known about it, and how the system worked, you didn't dispute it. So 140 million registered voters have consented through their silence that it's okay to be run by a foreign country that's not America, just because the words look similar. So think about that. This is how they get you. And again, we go back to the birth certificate. And when you were born, they took your DNA, which is proof of you existing. How do you prove you exist? What, you show a driver's license? Well, anybody can make a fake ID, can't they? You could say, well, your parents said that, or my birth certificate says that. They have the DNA evidence of who you are. They own it because it was abandoned. And because of admiralty law, just because you don't know about it doesn't mean it can't affect you. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, they can say when you go to court, well, you don't own you. You know who owns you? You're part of Congress. They don't have the three branches of the legislation, judicial, and the, um, what's the third? Judicial, legislative, and executive. That's not the same anymore. 
the, the you have basically a board of directors, which is Congress. You have a CEO of a corporation, which is the president. And then you have the Department of the of I think it's Department of Justice, which works under the president, who is the CEO. So let's go into the birther thing. Everybody says, oh, well, you know, he was born in Kenya. He can't be a president. Well, if it was based on the original United States of America, you're right. But since he works for a corporation, let's give you a prime example. If does do you have to be an American citizen to be a corporate uh, to own a corp you know to be the president of Walmart? No, they don't care. They have stores all around the world. They have McDonald's in France. Does that mean an American citizen can't be the owner of McDonald's? Of course not. Or a CEO of the corporation? Of course not. So it's irrelevant where Barack Obama came from. He's just running a corporation. Anybody can run a corporation, and you didn't vote him in unless only three or less people in Congress decided to go against the, all the people that had the three delegates in Washington, D.C. So this is how they're getting and entrapping people, and this is why people get thrown in jail. This is why you have to pay mortgages. This is why you have to pay taxes, because if you declare yourself a U.S. citizen and you didn't know what it meant, well, you've entrapped yourself. So here's the thing. Now that you know this, what are you going to do about it? Because you don't have to do this. It's based on your consent. Well, silence is consent. Now that you know what is going on, do you still wish to consent? What I'm finding out for the remedy is basically we have to get reclaim our DNA and get it back from them. That's what I'm trying to figure out how to do. There are some very smart people that are coming up with this right now. And I promise you, when I get this, I will give it to you guys. And that's why I do this stuff. I am not asking for a thing. Because you know what? If all of a sudden everybody in America woke up and we got out of the system, well, I am free as well. Which means you never have to pay an income tax again. You're not supposed to. You don't have to. You just choose to. You don't have to pay a mortgage again. Not from somebody that bought it from a bank. Because it's made from fictional money that doesn't exist through the Federal Reserve. If you want to keep doing that, say nothing. If you're fed up now and you realize the lie, it's time to act. It's time to stand up. I want people to send this message out. I want people to share this because the country that you think you have is not what you think it is. So all these states that you think you live in, under the legal definition, they're not talking about the ground. They're talking about a piece of paper. So if I was to make a statement, and if I would have said this earlier, people would have said this was crazy. If I made a statement that no people live in the state of New York, if I was to say that in the beginning of this video, people would have said, that's that's stupid. That's crazy. There's millions of people living in the state of New York. No, there aren't. If you go by legal definition, then only persons or citizens, which are corporations, not the actual physical person, even though we're physical, they're not talking about in law physical you. They're talking about the birth certificate that is supported by their DNA evidence that they own you. Or at least the evidence of you. They make a name that is the same exact as yours, only capital letters, to show the difference. Well, then there are no people, because the definition of people is not the same as the definition of person or citizen. And because you're not saying the union state of New York, you're talking about the state of New York, which is a piece of paper that says New York on it, even though I apologize this is backwards, it's a corporation franchise. So there are 50 franchises to the corporation called the United States. Now, I know a lot of people made fun of me of making this, talking about this stuff a while ago. And I can kind of understand that because I couldn't bridge all the pieces together. Because of people like Santos Bonacci, Kate of Gaia, Dean Clifford, um, Kurt Kallenbach, a whole bunch of other different people. I was learning piece and piece and piece. And now I finally got it together. This is what our country has been doing to us since the 1860s. They ab abandon the original Constitution, which is treason, created a corporate country that is backed by the city of London, the crown. That's why if you have a check a lawyer, any lawyer has to pass the bar. What is the bar? The British Accredited Registry, which means it is subject to the jurisdiction of the crown located in the city of London, which is basically owned by the Vatican. If you want to be subject to this stuff and not do anything, that is absolutely your right. I'm not here to tell anybody to do anything. I'm here to speak truth. This is the most important truth I've ever spoken in my entire life. 
You could verify it, you could dismiss it, you could do nothing. But if you do nothing, then you deserve what you get. So when the cops beat people, they're not beating humans, they're beating persons. They're beating their property, their subjects. They can do whatever they want. If you were a cattle rancher, you could brand your marking into a cattle, and guess what? It's going to hurt them, but you won't get in trouble for it. Why? Because they're your property. So there are rules. Just like, for example, if you're a parent, you have little kids, and they start yelling and screaming, and you say, well, as long as you live under my house, you follow my rules. Well, according to the way they've scammed you, they've owned your DNA, which is the only evidence and proof that you really are who you say you are. They made a fake corporation in your name and didn't tell you about it. You went your whole life using that information, so you're not using you. You're using a fictional character that they made to pretend to you, and because you used it, that basically confirmed that they were right. Now, let me tell you something. You ever see all these movies and TV shows that are coming out about zombies or that show, Walking Dead? Well, guess what? You're the Walking Dead. You're the zombie. They're making fun of you. Because it doesn't mean that they are actually dead people rising from the grave. It means that you are under jurisdiction of, under, um, admiralty law. You were lost at sea. They tried to find you by posting the birth on the, in the newspaper. Nobody claimed it. They had evidence of who you are from the placenta, which is your DNA. They made a false fictional character of you and you're legally dead. I'm not dead, but legally dead because I never came and reported it. So it's time to get that back. So if you ever saw, like, for example, when a prisoner is about to be executed, excuse me, and they walk them down to the execution chamber, what do the, all the other prisoners say? Dead man walking. So if the zombie shows, all those movies about zombies, that's you. You're not literally rising from the grave. You're not literally dead. But under the law, legally, under their definition, you're legally dead. They own you. How's that feel? So when the cops beat people up, when the government steals your money, guess what? It's not yours. If the p cops come and confiscate and break into your house at gunpoint like they did during the, the Boston bombing where they just took people in military gear and went into everybody's homes and threw them out, you can't complain. And when the banks shut down the banks and have the bank holidays and take all of your money and you sit there and complain, it's not your money. It's theirs. They own it. They own the rights to you because you never disputed it. So all these people that are sitting there marching, talking about civil rights, you're actually asking to be a citizen. You don't want civil rights. You want your natural rights. There's a big difference. You don't want the law that's based on their structure, which is admiralty law. Now, how do you know that you're in that? Well, all you have to do is look at the American flag. If you see the gold trim in Amer around the American flag, and I've made a video about this, that is a symbol. Remember, I talked earlier about symbols of admiralty law. It's a military flag. It is not the United States. So the next time when you see the president talk and you see that flag behind him, notice that gold trim. That ain't, that ain't America. That's the United States. There's a difference. So now you know the difference. United States of America, that's a country. The United States, that's a corporation. So if you want to go around bragging how you're a U.S. citizen, well, you've basically confirmed that you're a slave. And because you don't know the law, ignorance is no excuse. So I hope this got helped you. I hope you watched this whole thing. If you watch this thing entirely, I want you to comment. Whatever else you comment is fine. But I want you to comment, God bless the United States of America. And pass this on. Give it a thumbs up. It's time for the haters to go away. It, this is time for truth. If you don't want to make your own video, you don't have to. But I'm asking you to share this video or make someone else watch this with you because it will put all the pieces together. If you want to be a piece of property, then you have no right to complain. So you can march all you want. And like a famous person says, and I don't remember who said it, but he said, as long as they pay their taxes, let them march all they want. And that's why nothing gets done, because you don't know what you are. Now you do. Peace.